Hey, Ron here from Military Images Magazine with a new episode of Life on the Civil War Research Trail. Today, we're going back to antebellum times during those very difficult moments in our history where pro-slavery and anti-slavery forces were turning to violence to be able to solve problems using the gun and the sword instead of the pen to figure out the question, the larger question of enslavement of people that had been dogging the country for decades since its founding. No better example than that is Kansas, bloody Kansas in 1856, where the factions really went at each other. Well, in a different part of the country, Western Virginia, that's where I was this morning, reading an interesting book called History of Harrison County, West Virginia by Henry Haymond. The book was published in 1916, and Haymond was a Civil War veteran from the Union Army. He dedicates a whole chapter to the question of slavery, and I want to read you a little bit of what he had to say. Quote, these merchants and human beings who made a business of buying up Negroes and taking them to the South were called soul drivers. Their calling was considered a cruel and inhuman one, and they did not stand well in the estimation of the people. Occasionally upon the settlement of estates, slaves, men, women, and children would be sold at auction in front of the courthouse to the highest bidder. It was a sad sight as families were separated, never to meet again. Heyman continues, the slave code of Virginia was severe and tyrannical. It was unlawful to teach a slave to read or write. It was unlawful for anyone to deny the right of property and slaves, either by writing or speaking, or to assist a slave to escape from bondage. A justice of the peace had the authority to take a newspaper from the United States Post Office and burn it if, in his opinion, it contained anti-slavery sentiments. Thus was denied the right of free speech and freedom of the press. America's great editor, Horace Greeley, editor of the New York Tribune, was indicted by the Circuit Court of Harrison County for circulating his paper containing anti-slavery sentiments. That, the whole passage uh, that I just read to you, of course, gave me pause. But the last part in particular about Horace Greeley, whose picture here, about 1850, six years before all the events in Kansas and now in Harrison County, West Virginia, were coming into play. So I became a little interested to find out more about what exactly this was all about. And I didn't have too far to go. In newspapers.com, I went right to the New York Tribune, and I was fortunate to find a little news brief in the September uh, 26th, 1856 issue, and um, it's in the form of a letter that Tribune, or pardon me, that Greeley shares in the Tribune, and this letter was written by a man named W.P. Hall. As you're going to find out, Hall and another man attempted to form a club, as he called it. Uh, and this club was clearly about anti-slavery. It was an anti-slavery club. And he described it as a club for the Tribune. And so this is where the mayhem begins in Little Harrison County in Western Virginia. So let me read this letter to you. Shinstown, Virginia, Messrs. Greeley, I regret to inform you that I am indicted for getting up a club for the Tribune. Great God, has it come to this that a man must be sent to the penitentiary for reading a newspaper? The grand jury had one of the subscribers brought before them with an armful of copies of the Tribune, and they were distributed among them. They examined them a long time and were about giving it up that it would have to pass when, lo and behold, one of them discovered an extract from the Pittsburgh Dispatch which gave an account of the great Negro hunt of Roth and company, and on that they pronounced it an abolitionist document. The court ordered the jury to meet on Monday next to indict the postmaster of Shinston. I discover that the law of Virginia makes my case felony. I may have to flee or serve a time in the Richmond Penitentiary. I would like to hear from you whether it is legal for your paper to circulate in the States. I have notified the court 
that if they would show some leniency in my case, if they should decide the said paper to be illegal, I would discontinue my club, sign W.P. Hall. There's an addendum to the editor of the New York Tribune. Sir, the grand jury for this county this week presented Horace Greeley of New York, Mr. Hall of Shinston, and myself of this place for circulating the Tribune. You may make any use of this information you may desire. Yours very truly, Ira Hart, Clarksburg, Harrison County, Virginia. So, got quite a bit of a tangle. You have the Circuit Court of Harrison County. They are passing an indictment. They're planning to indict Horace Greeley. You've got these two gentlemen, W.P. Hall and Ira Hart, who are trying to form this club, this Tribune Club, which I'm pretty sure was masking in uh, anti-slavery movement, an abolitionist movement. And so uh, I'm not going to go into all of the details that follow, but the short version of the story is there are some legal challenges that they face in Harrison County. And long story, short, 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 eventually they are not able to bring an indictment against Horace Greeley. So that chapter ends. But for a little moment in time, in September of 1856, Harrison County in Western Virginia was going up against the powerful New York Tribune and Horace Greeley. So that's it for today. We'll see you next time on the trail. Take care.